Are the FIA karting championships the pinnacle of the sport anymore? Mm, I don't know. No? Okay, so once again, <laughs> um, uh, European karting, I guess, world karting is gone viral a bit at the weekend there was a crash when loads of the juniors went tanking into a corner in the wet and they all went off and um i had a few people contact me going oh, have you seen this what is going on this is supposed to be the top level of the sport right um when you see rain you kind of have to dial it back a bit and it just looked kind of funky it looked like um it kind of looked like i guess a lot of drivers out of depth and i know people were saying well you know this is what happens it, no one knew the tyres and all that kind of stuff, which is, you know, fair enough. Um, I sort of watched it and was kind of like, uh, that don't look great, does it, for what's supposed to be the top level of the sport. And um, But really, that didn't bother me so much, really. The really thing that got motivated to me to, to, to make this video, to ask the question, um, and I'll, I'll sort of try and answer it the best way I can, because it's one of those questions that you, you, you say, is it really relevant? I don't know, probably not. Um, but there was an incident when, in one of the races, there was like, it started raining, I think, and three drivers chose wets. It was one of the heats on Saturday, I think. Anyway, this this kid was leading, it was in the senior OK, I think it was one of the heats, and he was on wets, and he was getting caught by the guy in second, but the top three had lapped the field, right? Because they were on wets, everyone was on slicks, and it was damp, so obviously they had a massive advantage, right? So the kid leads, he goes to lap someone who's on slicks, he drives right into him, spins out. Which kind of was a bit like, well, it's kind of weird. Um, and then uh, he tried to get his cart started and they've got the decompression valve and he sort of pushed it and he, he didn't look like he knew what he was doing, really. Um, and he sort of jumped in the cart. It already stopped before, by the time he got to the throttle. And then he got up and walked away. And I thought to myself, this is the European Karting Championship in senior OK. And he, like... It didn't look like he was very proficient at starting the cart. Now, there might be some sub rules that says you can only attempt to start the cart once. So, someone can correct me on that. But I remember at Blackbush once in a TKM, and I, I span out for whatever reason. And I spent half the lap trying to start the thing. And it was like, if I don't get this started, I can't live with myself. Um, and I was nearly dying of exhaustion at the end of it. And this kid had a lap on the field, so, a lap on fourth. So, I thought, he's still got a third place. So if he got that thing started and it took him half a minute, you know, he would still be fine. He'd still get third place in the heat. And um, and that's really got me thinking. And, and I was watching it and I don't know, maybe I'm biased, maybe I'm being unfair, but the, the, the championship round, it just didn't scream quality drivers to me. And um, But before I did the video, I thought, right... Um, me talking isn't is too much it's, it's just going to be boring so i wanted to ask the community what they thought about the subject before i did a video on it so this is i, I asked on facebook and, and these were some of the comments and i thought some of them made really good points and others i'd argue with so i thought i'd go through some i thought i'd go through some of them um so uh lee wrote personally because i asked the question um do you think the fi championship still represent the pinnacle of the sport um, person, so Lee wrote personally, yes, I think so. I think more people would be of the same mindset if they were classes we raced in the UK. For example, in the UK, um, if the UK run OK and OK Junior, then we would see it as a class to progress into. Currently, it's just seen as something they race in Europe. Um, I would say to that, um, we did have OK and we did have Formula A and we did have KF and, and the UK rejected it from a market point of view. So it wasn't seen... It was really the death of... When KF came in, and it was already going south before that, but um, when KF came in, it sort of... It sort of... People... When it started to decline and, and, and evaporate, it wasn't seen as the pinnacle anymore. So it's like... It's like a, you know, I, I don't think that people wouldn't naturally see it as the pinnacle because it's already been rejected before. Um, Connor wrote, it would be better... It would be a lot better if money wasn't an issue guarantee that all the ones racing in the event wouldn't be there if karting was as cheap as to get into as football i mean while that's true there were drivers there that i know aren't minted um uh, shane burke uh he put i think so he takes a lot to be at the very front of an fi event 
but with the majority of the field also doing WSK, it means WK, WK, WSK, in my opinion, isn't a million miles off. So Siobhan Turney wrote, and I believe this is the, the mother of Joe Turney races for Tony Kart. She wrote, I believe so, not necessarily entirely due to the drivers. As we all know, are fantastic drivers who don't have the budget to participate. I have two reasons for saying this. Firstly, OK is a platform used by the factory teams. It is reasonable to suspect that the factory team employ who they determine to be the best drivers to represent the brand and also to develop the equipment. Secondly, is also the place the F1 teams want their drivers and pro of drivers on programs to be as they believe it offers the highest development opportunities and challenges. That being the case, one could say it has to be determined as the pinnacle. Uh, so I don't use F1 teams as a metric to designate what the pinnacle of kart racing is. Um, if anything, to, to some degree, they would, I would argue they'd want to avoid the pinnacle classes in kart and not to um, have detrimental effect on the drivers that they're trying to bring through. Um, and this goes, this goes into a, a greater point. So, like... You, if you're trying to bring drivers through karting as a way to get them into cars, do you really want them racing Lammers, Inglesias, Karemas, and all that? I know Karemas went to cars, but he came back to karts. And, and the pro-level guys that are more experienced, because you, you kind of want your drivers to, to be winning the championships to justify the investment. And if you're putting them in the pinnacle class, which kind of, as, as a sport, I guess we look as KZ now... Mm. It's kind of a weird one. Um, you'd kind of want to avoid that. Only Verstappen really made a good go at KZ as, as a driver. I mean, I know Leclerc did the, the, the KZ round in 2013 as well. And those two drivers are really good. So, you know. Um, but generally speaking, I, I see a lot of avoidance of the, the professional drivers, the professional cars. So I don't fully agree with the F1 thing. It might be the pinnacle if you're driver trying to get into F1 and you only want to race other drivers in that same framework the first point is uh that siobhan writes and i know her son races so she's she, her opinion is probably more valuable than mine about the teams um, wanting to have the best drivers in their carts uh, the thing is like it confuses me that we don't have danny curl racing he doesn't have a drive canon bradshaw won the world championship last year and he isn't racing at the european championship for atk so it's like if you're winning the biggest title and you don't have contracts being thrown at you there's something um awry i think uh crispin wrote i think so the scene okay for only yesterday was a great race and i believe the standard of the drivers is of the highest quality i don't uh don't fully agree crispin if danny curl isn't there i don't really agree i think he's one of the top drivers in the world and there's others as well it's not just danny ollie hodgson that lot so um biz van vermeeren wrote disagree i think the top the talent in IMA Euro Series and Rotax Euro Trophy may be better or the same level with big teams and big budgets. It's all about buying your opportunity into the... Oh, that's a, probably just a iPhone thing. Uh, so not getting, just buying. I mean, there's there's partly agree with that. I actually watch the X30 stuff and I don't watch so much of the Rotax stuff and I kind of agree. As someone, as an observer, I don't... To me now, it doesn't seem to be as big a differentiation between the elite level... In, in OK and the FIA classes as there is in, in other things now. It's it's I think it's more murky. And to be honest with you, I, I watch the X30 stuff and, and from a driver perspective, not pure competition because I like the multi-make stuff. I don't, I don't see a big differential. Um, Philip Everard wrote, when I see the whole grid coming off at the track, coming off the track because they aren't, because they haven't noticed that rain is coming down, I have doubts. Sam Snell, he's raced at the top level. So you should know better than anyone. FI is more like Formula 1. It's the pinnacle, but can be heavily influenced by which engine tuner or type is doing the best in your current regulations and what you're allowed to use depending on which time, you, which team you drive for. I agree. Um, I do agree with that. I just think as a mechanism, I don't think the teams are really investing as much in finding the best drivers. That motivation isn't there anymore. Dino wrote, Dino Mercurius, father of Theo. Uh, when the price of entry is upwards of 300k, that'll be for the season. Um, it's certainly the pinnacle of budget but what if you had to qualify to race in the championship and budget wasn't something you had to worry about rewind back to the interview with Mike Spencer and you'll see what he thought and um, yeah I mean I, I, I agree and disagree to a certain extent because I guess if you're looking at a driver focused championship versus a whole complete championship that includes a car and a manufacturer it's kind of there has to be some sort of symbiosis there um, getting the balance right and um, who else made some good points there's a few more uh, but the, the real question 
Yeah, it is from James McMahon, which is um, from Cart Pulse. Uh, so everyone should go on there, check out their forum. What is the criteria for Pinnacle is the bigger question, I think. And that's the question I kind of really struggled with. Um, so for all that, talking about this, talking about that in comments, what does the Pinnacle mean? Um, and I think kart racing, I think, I think in the 90s, I think we all naturally... Pre Rotax, I guess, and yeah, I mean, just or I say pre Rotax, I say pre two thousand when it really accelerated. You know, you had your Orsinis, your Beggios, your Rossies, um, you know, and you had your Fullertons and your, your Mike Wilsons going before that. You know, it was kind of like, and you had your, your guys like Pantano and Button, and so there was a kind of mix of drivers that were the top level carters, and then you had your young guns, and there was a kind of symbiosis there where. They kind of live together, you know. Um, I, I prefer to view karting as a sport within itself, but as a visual spectacle, you, you absolutely knew when you were watching the top-level FIA championships and the direct drive classes, you were watching the elite of the elite. That's the vibe it had. Um, and, you know, you you know the, the what we have now is a very transient uh, culture, I guess, of drivers, where every year, it's effectively now, bar a few drivers like maybe Turney, Keeble, I guess. I'm not sure, but but Tony Morgan Porter's racing as well. Most of the drivers are there, you know, here today, gone tomorrow. It's more transient. There's little, there's less kind of reliable kind of figures in that level of competition. So you don't really, you, you kind of just you're watching something that I don't think has the same gravitas as the sport used to have for, for direct drive mainly because we have to talk about KZ in a minute. So for me. The, the the feeling I get from it is that the sport is trans that level of the sport is transformed from a kind of something that's very tangible to something more transient. And to be honest with you, um, if we look at the weight limit, which is one four five kilos for seniors, and and I think they reduced the age limit as well. In my opinion, I I I'm at the point where I watch it and go, why don't they just why don't the FAA call it Formula Five and be done with it? It doesn't seem like they have any interest as promoting kart racing as a single powerful motorsport that you can get involved with and reach the top. Like, it, it seems like they want it to, to re fundamentally, they want it to be mainly or solely focused on being this little step before cars. And to me, it's like um, desecration of the sport to some degree. Um so that's something where, like in a recent press release before the race, it was like, okay, it's getting ever younger. So of course it's getting ever younger because it's only ever promoted as a stepping stone to cars. The weight limit is just totally prohibitive to any normal human. Like I have serious concerns about that. I'm watching it. It didn't scream absolute quality of driver. Now that might be offensive to the drivers that compete in it, who I'm sure are all really good. But it didn't scream quality above any other race series that's out there. I mean, I look to I look to America, and I think Ryan Norberg, he's doing really well. I look to Australia, and I know he doesn't race so much now. I see Sarah, and I look to the UK, and I see Hodgson, and I see Danny Curl, and I think these drivers are like figures that they've been around, they've been around the block, and it's like you can see it's all tangible top drivers. They're part of the, they embody the sport. And then I look at the senior AK, and I just think it looks like to me a bunch of kids. Who next year are going to be racing Formula Four, or and it just does. It seems almost like, from a karting perspective, um, worthless. It's like the heritage has sort of kind of stopped, and it's. I think I think we really peaked when Danny Curl won in two thousand and seventeen because it was like, wow, that's amazing. Is a driver that's just got to the top of the sport, and it kind of from there on out, it's kind of like. You know, and now Travis Sanuto is not in there, so he's I think he's doing KZ, so it's like he's the reference that's gone as well. And, you know, so, so we've got Travis Sanuto, I don't think he's he wasn't racing in, in OK. We've got Danny Curl and we've got Callum Bradshaw, like the last world champions over the last few years, and they're not racing at the European Championship. So it's like, well, what does what does it mean if the world champions aren't racing in it? There's, there's something what other sport is like that? So you know, it's it's a complicated question. And obviously, when we Theo Mercurius, um, his dad Dino mentioned the Mike Spencer, you know, he was a site. He's a guy, a guy that's raced, you know, Formula Super A and British Champion. He's like, oh, it's just money, mate. It's just money. And you, you know, over time, you go, 
mm, I, it, it kind of gets to a point where you're like, I, I was watching it going, I don't really understand what I'm watching here. It doesn't seem like it's karting. It's more like a sub-series of cars. Whereas the KZ stuff, I can engage with a lot more as a viewer, as someone who wants to be part of the sport, where it makes sense to be part of. And then that, the KZ stuff, I'm like, yeah, I can, oh, there's there's drivers there in Glazias and Lammers, and, and, and I know them all, and they all make sense. They're all top carters. So, is, so to hark back onto the original question, is FIA European Championship car, and I guess European Championship, because that's what we've got at the moment, does it represent the pinnacle of the sport? And I honestly... I watch I watch the stuff in the UK and I watch the top top drivers here and I just think I do not think that I think as a formula in terms of what we make that's where my heart is but it doesn't seem like that's driving the sport at that level what's driving the sport is kind of a different motivation and that is like the F1 thing because I think the F1 thing is you can make more money out of less drivers but anyway let's conclude let's let's wrap this up You've been with me this long. Um, does it really matter? No, at the end. Um, I just think it's it's kind of, there's a part of me that wants to have something kind that's tangible that we can all look up to and talk about and go, this driver's minute, have you seen this driver? And with, with the way it is at the moment, it's so transient, it just seems to have no value, really. Not to, to me, anyway. And it's a shame because I'd really love to have something like that to watch and get excited by. And I'd... If you're into car racing and the future of car racing, I'm sure you can probably extract more pleasure out of it and more enjoyment. And but to me, it's just like watching kids. And I look back at the the, name, the big drivers of the sport, and I just know this year, whoever wins the world title probably will be in cars, and it's going to be like that going forward. I think the FIA, whether it's been their motivation or not, I, I just don't think that they view karting in the way that they see the potential in kiting that maybe maybe I do and other people do. So, but I'd love to hear your comments on it. And am I just talking to something that doesn't really matter? I mean, kart, is, is karting a sport or is it just a hobby, really? Um, because we don't have that kind of mechanism anymore. I'd love to hear what your opinion is. Do you think I'm way off base? Do you think I'm we're just talking nonsense? Um, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. So, Comment below, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube. And if you like the videos, please subscribe. Hit the bell so you know when I upload a new video and you can hear me rant. Um, thanks for watching and, um, yeah, see you soon. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, please check out the links below to our Patreon page and PayPal. And also the links to our merch store on Teespring. Thanks for watching.